Massive global technical outage. Multiple boarding screens at terminal gates had blue screens with error message. Digital outage disrupted networks in many countries. A faulty software update issued by one of the world's largest cybersecurity firms, CrowdStrike, resulted in a massive overnight outage that affected approximately 8.5 million Windows computers around the globe. This disrupted businesses, airports, hospitals, train stations, and even broadcasters on a global scale. CrowdStrike clarified that the outage was not caused by a cyber attack, but was a result of a defect in a software update for its flagship security product, Falcon Sensor. This defect caused any Windows computers with Falcon Sensor installed on them to crash without fully loading, resulting in the infamous blue screen of death. According to CrowdStrike on Friday, the issue has been identified, isolated, and a fix has been deployed. Some businesses and organizations are beginning to recover, but many expect the outages to drag on over the next week, given the complexity of the fix. So what even happened? How can one system update cause global chaos for roughly 24 hours? Hi, and welcome to another episode of Darkman Digest, where we dive deep into today's most important topics in tech. In this video, we'll dig into what actually happened with CrowdStrike's software updates and its implications with Microsoft. We'll look back at how CrowdStrike was founded and what the company does. And lastly, what this means for us as the world becomes more and more digital. Let's get into it. Late Thursday, July 18th, going into Friday, July 19th, reports of IT problems occurring in Windows computers began to emerge. They were getting stuck with the infamous blue screen of death, a blue error screen with a message that displays when Windows encounters a critical failure, crashes, or simply can't load. These issues were first noticed in Australia early Friday morning, and then reports quickly came in from Asia, Europe, and the United States. Soon after these reports came in, CrowdStrike confirmed that a software update for for its Falcon product had malfunctioned, causing Windows computers with Falcon installed on them to crash. For context, Falcon lets CrowdStrike remotely analyze and check for malicious threats and malware on installed computers. Around the same time, Microsoft Azure reported a significant outage at one of its most used regions in the central part of the United States. Around Friday at noon, Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella posted on X, saying that they were working closely with CrowdStrike and across the industry to provide customers technical guidance and support to safely bring their systems back online. This incident was so significant, affecting almost every business running on the Windows operating system that uses CrowdStrike, which is a good portion of the world. CrowdStrike's software is so ubiquitous, the outages cause major chaos around the world in a variety of ways. The company provides software and services to 29,000 corporate customers, including half of the Fortune 500, 43 out of the 50 US states, and eight out of the top 10 tech firms. Affected devices include cash registers at grocery stores, departure boards at airports and train stations, school computers, work-issued computers, airport check-in systems, healthcare networks, and many, many more. Before we dig into more details about the repercussions of this incident and what the company and the US government are doing to resolve it, let's look at how CrowdStrike was founded and what they currently do as a business. CrowdStrike is a cybersecurity company based in Austin, Texas that provides cloud workload protection and endpoint security, threat intelligence, and cyber attack response services. It's been involved in investigations of several high-profile cyber attacks like the 2014 Sony Pictures hack and the 2016 cyber attacks on the Democratic National Committee. CrowdStrike was founded in 2011 by George Kurtz, Dmitry Apermovich, and Greg Marson with the mission to reinvent security for the cloud era. They recognized that cyber security problems had evolved, but current solutions had not kept up to pace, which motivated them to start the company. George Kurtz is the CEO, and he has over 30 years of experience in the security industry and previously held executive roles at McAfee. His background as an entrepreneur and his ability to commercialize new technologies helped CrowdStrike's early innovation and growth. It raised a total of $330 million, IPO'd in October 2020, generates over $2 billion in annual recurring revenue and currently has a market cap of $74 billion. Its flagship product is called Falcon, a platform that provides endpoint protection, threat intelligence, and attribution. Falcon is used by enterprises to manage security on millions of computers around the world. These businesses include large corporations, hospitals, transportation hubs, and government departments. Most consumer devices don't run Falcon, so they were unaffected by this outage. One of CrowdStrike's recent claims to fame was when it caught 
caught a group of Russian government hackers breaking into the Democratic National Committee ahead of the 2016 US presidential election. Something funny about the company is that it's also known for using memorable animal themed names for the hacking groups it tracks. For example, for Russia's General Staff Main Intelligence Directorate, CrowdStrike calls it Fancy Bear. For the Chinese government group, it calls it Gothic Panda. The company even makes action figures to represent these groups and sells them in its merch shop. CrowdStrike is also so big that it's one of the sponsors of the Mercedes F1 team. And this year, it ran a Super Bowl ad, which is the first for any cybersecurity company. Today's adversaries move fast. CrowdStrike moves faster. CrowdStrike. We stop breaches. All right, so what are the solutions that CrowdStrike has in place for the many businesses affected? Let's break it down. The major problem here is that CrowdStrike's Falcon sensor software malfunctioned, causing Windows machines to crash, and there's no easy way to remedy it. CrowdStrike has issued a patch and has also detailed a workaround that could help affected systems function normally until a more permanent solution is available. The workaround is for customers to access the affected system to remove the defective file. Users should boot the computer into safe mode or Windows recovery environment, navigate to the CrowdStrike directory, and delete this faulty file shown on screen. You can imagine this can be a major headache for companies and organizations with a large number of Windows powered computers and devices across various countries. But what about the US government? Can it help with anything? Well, given that this problem comes from a company, there isn't much the government can do. The Biden administration is in touch with CrowdStrike and affected entities, mostly because the federal government is a customer of CrowdStrike and is also impacted. Several federal agencies were also impacted as well including the Department of Education and the Social Security Administration. Homeland Security is working with its U.S. cybersecurity agency, CISA, CrowdStrike, and Microsoft, as well as its federal, state, local, and critical infrastructure partners to fully assess and address system outages. There will no doubt be questions for CrowdStrike from government and congressional investigators. But for now, the immediate focus will be on the recovery of affected systems. So as you can see, one little software update which affected less than just 1% of all Windows machines worldwide had broad economic and societal impacts. What does this tell us about our technology-driven world today? Let's break it down. According to Microsoft, this outage affected roughly 8.5 million Windows devices across the globe. It's one of the worst cyber incidents in history, and some even say it's probably the largest ever cyber event eclipsing all previous hacks and outages. The closest to this was the WannaCry cyber attack in 2017 that affected around 300,000 computers in 150 countries. For context, the WannaCry ransomware attack targeted Microsoft Windows computers by encrypting data and demanding ransom payments in Bitcoin. There was also a major six hour outage in 2021 at Meta for its apps like Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp. But it was largely contained to the social media giant and some link partners. The US cybersecurity agency, CISA, said that due to CrowdStrike's outage, it's observed threat actors taking advantage of this incident for phishing and other malicious activity. It warned organizations to stay vigilant. This is definitely an opportunity for malicious actors to exploit confusion and chaos chaos to carry out cyber attacks on their own. Criminals could use this IT outage to pretend to be IT professionals to steal access, password, codes, and even more. So if you're one of those affected by this outage, it's extremely important to verify people are who they say they are before taking sensitive actions. But what does this tell us about our future as the world is increasingly going more and more digital? I have four insights for you. First, the widespread impact of the outage underscores our heavy reliance on digital infrastructure, with sectors like transportation, banking, and healthcare experiencing significant disruptions, it's clear that even a single point of failure in our digital ecosystem can have negative consequences. The incident also highlights the critical need for rigorous quality assurance and testing procedures. CrowdStrike's faulty update that caused the incident was most likely the result of inadequate testing. However, even with robust testing protocols, companies must always have comprehensive disaster recovery plans to ensure they can quickly recover 
recover from unexpected disruptions. Even large publicly traded companies can falter without robust testing QA practices and disaster recovery plans. Luckily, CrowdStrike was quick to diagnose the situation and is working on a more permanent solution. Third, the outage has led to increased scrutiny of cybersecurity practices and products. Companies are likely to face greater pressure to ensure their systems are robust and their deployment processes are foolproof. There's a growing argument for independent bodies to audit and certify the practices of these companies. This could help ensure best practices and reduce the risk of similar incidents in the future. Lastly, the incident gives hope for emerging technologies like AI and machine learning to play a pivotal role in predicting and preventing similar issues. These technologies can help identify potential vulnerabilities before they become critical problems, enhancing the overall resilience of our digital systems. As the world becomes more digital, the CrowdStrike outage reminds us of the vulnerabilities inherent in our interconnected world. It was a significant global event that emphasized today's dependency on digital infrastructures. It calls for companies to have improved QA practices, advanced preventive technologies, comprehensive disaster recovery plans, increased scrutiny on cybersecurity, and gives hope for emerging technologies like AI to help with prevention. That's it for this video. I hope you found it insightful. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on my next tech documentary. Also, be sure to check out the video on screen for another deep dive. Thanks for watching and catch you later.